These are the rectus abdominis muscles, my right side and my left side, that are held together at the midline by the linear alba. Here is the navel. The linear alba is created by the aponeuroses or tendons of all of the abdominal muscles. Here we can only see the recti muscles, as they are the outermost layer of all the abdominal muscles. You can see here that there is normal separation between the recti muscles. There are several causes of abnormal separation between the recti muscles, or diastasis recti, that we cover in the course. Right now we're going to focus on one of these causes, pregnancy, and look at what happens to the abdominal wall. During pregnancy, all connective tissue in the body is softened by hormones to allow the pelvis to widen for birth and to enable the abdominal wall to stretch in order to grow a baby. Thank goodness our bodies are designed to do this so that we are able to grow a baby. As the uterus grows, it puts pressure on the linear elbow which stretches, causing the recti muscles to separate. But it's not a tear. It's simply a stretch of the linear elbow. Sometimes the separation is greatest at the navel, and sometimes it's widest below the navel or above the navel. The linear alba also connects the pelvis to the rib cage, so alignment and body habits will also influence the separation. As the uterus grows, my center of gravity changes. So that I don't fall forward, I shift my center of gravity back to my heels, thrusting my pelvis forward. This puts even more pressure on the linear alba. As the uterus grows towards the end of pregnancy, it presses the diaphragm upwards, which decreases the vertical diameter of the chest cavity. Our bodies are perfectly designed to grow a baby, so the circumference of the rib cage increases. I also look for ways to give myself more space to breathe, and in my body's wisdom, I find more space by lifting my ribs and flaring them open. What happens after I give birth? There is some natural healing in this area, and some women do heal completely. But in many cases, the linear alba remains unnaturally stretched. I can measure the width of the separation of the recti muscles at the level of the navel, below the navel, and above the navel. Though this width is not the most important factor in diagnosing the diastasis or in measuring the progress of healing. What is far more important than the width is the distortion of the linear alba, meaning how deep is it and is there any tension generated in the linear alba when I activate the abdominals. If there is tension in the linear alba, then I can probably heal very well with effective progressive exercises that target the whole core working together. All of this is covered in the course. After giving birth, it is important to bring awareness to my alignment. As long as I continue to thrust my pelvis forward, I am continuing to put pressure on the linear alba, and the diastasis is now a symptom rather than the cause of the problem. The same is true if I lifted and flared my ribs upward in pregnancy. I will now need to learn how to lower my ribs to bring the spine back into neutral. Learning correct alignment is an essential part of the program, together with effective breathing and progressive exercises to slowly heal the diastasis, to look better and feel better, and to improve the function of the whole core.